and welcome to Nintendo Nostalgia. I am your host, Ryan Black, and I'm joined by my co-host, Chris Warren, and we are back and we are playing with power. Chris, how are you doing this week? I'm doing awesome. It's been a terrific week. How are you, Ryan? I am pretty good. I'm a bit exhausted running around, and I've got my second COVID shot tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it, but also nice. um, preparing for the sickness that's going to come. So, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, but it's awesome that we're at episode 238. Uh, we're getting up there. It's pretty crazy that we've made it this far. Uh, we're fast approaching 250, and that's that's blows my mind. Yeah. Uh, we should do awesome. something special for that, actually, now that I think of it. Hmm. I wonder what we would do. Hmm. Mm. Don't give our <laughs> secrets away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, without any further ado, let's get into what we are Radical Rexon about. Okay, Chris, you got anything for us this week? Oh, boy. Um, I mean, it's finals week with school, so just kind of concerned with that. Um, but it's, you know, you and I were talking before this, but the weather lately has been insanely gorgeous. It was like tropical today, so it just felt <laughs> awesome to have that like little taste of summer. So uh, I needed that so bad. Um, so, yeah, definitely looking forward to the summer. Just been going on. A lot of different nature trails and um, seeing some friends and playing games online. Um, but game wise, let's see. Um, I did buy Fez. I think I mentioned that last time. Um, just been playing Diablo 3 with friends and like Mario Kart. I think that's all I've done in the past week. But I am planning my next big like summer adventure game. So I might like post a poll on Facebook just to like have people help me out. It's like I just want some type of game that kind of gives me the same kind of like feeling that Pokemon used to and like Banjo Kazooie used to and like Ocarina of Time stuff like that. So I just want like a good adventure game that's like that just totally immerses you and has like puzzles and great music and boss fights and stuff. So I'm I'm going down my lists in like my collection and just trying to figure out what kind of game would be perfect for that so stay tuned for that i guess and um i bought <laughs> i got this game in the mail spinch have you heard of spinch <laughs> no it's i i'm not gonna lie i don't know what kind of game this is <laughs> i literally only bought it because the box art is incredible <laughs> and it's it's published by i am 8-bit so i know it's good quality and i saw that the reviews were good and mm -hmm. whatever genre it was you know when i read about it i was just like oh yeah i can get behind this but it's like you see the box art and it's like this huge adorable white blob holding a bunch of other baby blobs and they're just really happy <laughs> and then <laughs> Like, there's this rainbow dragon just looking at them for no reason. I was just like, you know what? I need to play whatever this is. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll find out what Spinch is pretty soon. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that is about it for me this week. What about you, Ryan? Uh, well, um, I am gearing up for Neo World Ends With You. I'm pretty much completely oh. immersed in the world ends with you right now um, yeah. in all forms. <laughs> Uh, I am two pins away from com having mastered all pins in uh, World Ends With You Final Remix. And wow. uh, it's just, uh, I just have a couple of shutdown, or sorry, I have to basically have to level them to master them, and they have to be equal parts um, battle and shutdown PP to get it to, to master instead of evolve. And I keep missing two of them up, uh, but I'm really close. And they're really simple to do too. It's just a matter of like shutdown PP, where it is you set it and then you leave the system alone, and you gain point certain amount of points per day. So what I've been doing is I put down the switch and I pick up my DS and I start playing World Ends with You on my DS and start trying to get to a better place than what I was when I first played the game. I mean, it's it's really cool going back to playing that again and trying to fix my mistakes that I, when I was really dumb and didn't know what I was doing on the game. <laughs> so um, you know, so I'm, I'm kind of playing that and trying to get it to the point where I can get myself set up to where I can level really fast and start collecting pins and stuff. So if I ever do want to go back and complete the original DS version, I can, and it would be a little bit more uh, favorable, but just doing some grinding right now to get to that point to where I don't have to worry anymore. Like, you know, being able to level up my character really fast with the hollow leg and, and things like that. So. Okay. It's been fun. Que question for you. Yeah. Uh, something I've been wondering. So 
Um, I played a little bit of The World Ends With You when it came out, and I'm curious how the Switch one plays compared to the DS one, because I can't imagine that the Switch version plays better than the DS version. I just feel like it's sacrilegious to not have that second screen and touchscreen controls and with the stylus, you know what I mean? Um, I wouldn't say necessarily better, but they just did it in a different way. Okay. Um, it's it's a different flavor, different play style, um, but it still kind of captures that spirit, especially if you're playing with playing in two player mode with one Joy-Con in each hand. Um, you're still controlling two contr- two characters, though it's not quite the same. Um, mm. And this is it, when they initially made the switch. They went over to uh, phones first and did the the solo remix, and you got kind of an experience for that. And, and they converted that touch screen model over to the switch and it has controls but i think it's better to play it without the controllers on it you have to keep a controller handy to wake up if you put the system asleep when you put it back on again and start to play the game you have to have a controller and it has to connect to that controller but then after right. that you can switch to the to the touch screen no problem so okay uh, yeah, i it's, just feel it's like fun, just different. for me i just feel like it's such a ds experience you know i just can't I don't know. I I would have to try it. It's just like one of those definitive DS games to me. So um, it is yeah. a completionist nightmare slash heaven uh, <laughs> for all the things that you can do. Like once I've mastered all the pins, I'm going to try to uh, rank up my ESP, um, the ESP years rank, and that is insane to get. Um, basically, every ten thousand yen that you spend, you get a point. Every battle that you fight, you get a point. And I'm sitting at 4,000 points out of 9,999. So oh I've got a bit of a ways to go. But so I'll be grinding that out at some point. And then after that, I have to max out my characters, which is going to take a long time as well. I've got most of everything maxed out. I'm working on HP right now. And then I have to do the drop rate which I've heard rumored that it, it goes up to 999, um, but I've never seen anyone do it or confirm that. So, um, but yeah, I still have things to do uh, mm-hmm. in that. And then I also have the DS version. I can go back and try doing all that stuff too, which would be insane, but it's definitely like feeds my completionist need whenever I feel like going back to the series. Uh, but I'm just really looking forward to the Neo world ends with you. And then just yeah. really absolutely loving the animation uh, it's on. It's going on episode uh, five, I believe, um, and that is on Friday. Every Fridays they come out um, on Hulu and also on Funimation. So if you've got either of those, definitely check it out. It is it is good. Um, it's it's a different it's different pacing for the story. Uh, so some things have changed, but it still captures the same emotion in in the episodes and stuff, which is really cool uh, that it pulls that off and it does a really good job with the music and and I really like it. So yeah, that's cool. what Radical Rex is about. Um, yeah. I guess there's one other thing. It's just I didn't want it all to be the world ends with you. So I dusted off my uh, Virtual Boy and started a conversation and found out from Eric Plunk um, that there's a guy who fixes them permanently. And so I'm thinking about sending my Virtual Boy off. Um, only one lens works, so I can play games on the Virtual Boy if I'm like looking through like my right eye. Um, but it's not the best experience, so I'm hoping to <laughs> send it off and get that uh, fixed. And then I got these games that I can play. I'm gonna be after I get it fixed. I'm gonna track down the Galactic Pinball because that's one that I absolutely have to have for the system because it has Metroid. It's like Metroid collectors. Oh, true. Like, mandate. Yeah. Um, and then. Other than that, like maybe Pipe Dream saving up for Jack Bros, but that's going to take a while because it's yeah. it's going for over a thousand dollars on eBay right now. Yeah. Well, I know I uh, yeah. Thanks to Eric for uh, sharing that with me as well. I just I don't know. I'm I don't want to ship out my Virtual Boy. It's like it's so delicate and precious, you know. So I I don't know. I I, I would be fine with it. It's just like. I'd be so annoyed if something happened to it, but um, do you I, have got, the ESP I need adapter? to fix it. Probably. Yes, I do. Yeah. Because I think goes through batteries without it. I would, yeah, it's like you have to get that. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'd like the, you know, you and I were talking before this about that, too. But um, yeah, the, I got like everything with with the what I paid for my mm-hmm. uh, virtual play and, you know, very good price, too. And actually, I think it came with uh, Galactic Pinball, too. So um, very cool. 
Yeah, I've got. I can't play anything. <laughs> I've got to find the. Uh, <clears throat> I got to get a replacement stand piece because the swiveling part uh, fell apart, and I'm. Yeah. And I used uh, I'm using needle nose vice grips to kind of hold it into place roughly. Right. Uh, so it's still still usable, but it looks jank. Yeah. For the stand. Um, <laughs> but other than that, it's pretty cool. And just got to get that internal thing fixed. And yep, it's um, such a pain in the butt. I, we could go on and on about Virtual Boy and have a whole episode on it because I've got a lot yeah. to say about it. But oh yeah, it's definitely cool. And you know what? We should. We really should. Yes. I'll add that to the list. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think that about does it for me. And I don't know. What are we talking about this week? <laughs> There's some game coming out in the next couple days. Um, oh, what was that? Um, snap. <laughs> That's it. Pokemon Snap. Let's mm-hmm. get into it. done this episode recently um but before we get into the main topic we've got a voicemail to play here we go hey everybody it's josh i uh, actually was um meant to be on this episode tonight but uh after some technical difficulties decided uh i'll just leave a quick voicemail <laughs> um back in the day uh, i think i mentioned it before pokemon was not one of the big franchises i was into personally but um, I can't remember exactly how, but I did end up playing some Pokemon Snap and probably a a friend or something. But uh, and I really, I really enjoyed it. Um, and I actually just went back and played it again this evening. Some there were some this week with my daughter, and she seems to be a fan of it. So I'm really looking forward to this new one come out. That's coming out Friday. Um, it's it's unique. It's I can't even really compare it to much of anything else. I love going back to the stages and trying out different things and. Seeing what you can set off or throw at the different Pokemon, that sounds kind of rude, but uh, just to see how they react. Um, it, it's kind of one of those things you just sort of have to play. It's almost like trying to describe Animal Crossing. <laughs> Anyhow, you all have a great rest of your week, and I will see you next time. Thank you, Josh, for calling in. Sorry we missed you this week. Uh, hopefully we can get you on soon and uh, figure out those laptop issues. It seems to have some limitations right now with being able to do multiple things at once. Um, I'm really curious what Josh's experience with Pokemon Snap was kind of like, considering that he wasn't that big of a Pokemon fan. I just can't mm-hmm. imagine how that would translate into enjoyment if like, you don't have that background experience and fandom with the, the series. Because like, when Pokemon Snap came out, that was like peak Pokemon, Pokemon craziness and mania for all of us, at least for me. So... Um, I, I was losing my mind just as a fan over the type of experience that Pokemon Snap gave us. But um, maybe he was like pretty familiar with it and just like wasn't the biggest fan. So maybe that helped. But um, yeah, I'm glad that his uh, daughter's enjoying it because it really is a great game. I'm going to say it again. I say it every time. But Pokemon Snap is a first person shooter. So <laughs> uh, that that's something that like that's the only way that they could do that in a Pokemon game. <laughs> I mean, um, in a way, in a way, like um, it's in. Inter- yeah, that's fine. I'll I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish that, you know, I, I when I asked for more first person shooters on the Switch, I didn't mean this. Not to say I'm <laughs> complaining, but <laughs> but yeah, it's it would be really cool to get this on the N64 Classic or N64 online or whatever they're gonna do with that. So. Right. Because, I mean, it sucks that it's, like, lost in time at the moment. It's great that we're getting this new one, but, you know, people should really experience the original. It holds up very, very well. I'm sure we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But, like, Mm -hmm. you know, I was playing it for this episode, and it it feels totally fine. Like, I think even a person who's not overly familiar with games would be okay with understanding how it controls and what to Mm -hmm. do and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, it's a great game, and like you said, I hope it gets re-released. I believe we had a Facebook comment. Um, we, we had posted on our Facebook to gather some, uh, some nostalgic memories from people and uh, get some shout outs. So, uh, Chris, you want to go ahead and read those? Okay, yeah, sure. So, um, with our Facebook 
on a post. Um, we did post it a little bit late, so we just got one comment that that week. Uh, I'm sorry, this week. So um, Andrew Swan said the game was so fun, but it wasn't great. It needed more to it. This new one looks to have fixed everything. I had uh, I had and I I guess he meant uh, everything that he had an issue with with the original one. Uh, the updated graphics will be a big plus too. And I, I can get behind that. I can understand that. But um, for me, at least, like, I didn't really need Pokemon Snap to be this masterpiece um, when it came out or, like, even today. It doesn't need to be, like, this game of the year, Ocarina of Time type of game. It just needs to be, like, a fun, unique, immersive experience within the Pokemon world. And I think Pokemon Snap really delivered on that. Um, it had a lot more depth and complexity than what i was expecting back then um but you know like andrew said it could have had a little bit more it's a very short game but um i don't know i love it and um, i'm glad that andrew also like even though he's aware that it's not a perfect game like he said it is very fun and um he's looking forward to the new one so that's great um yeah what do you think about andrew's comment ryan um i can see that uh the length of the game was a bit disappointing but that wasn't the point. Um, the point was the more you dug into it, the more Easter eggs you would find. And the more little things that you could do, interact with the Pokemon and get better shots. And it rewarded you for trying different things and kind of experimenting and just trying to be a photographer, you know, to get like certain animals, if you will, to do certain things and to get great pictures. And you get graded on that. And so it was really cool. A uh, cool element, but yeah, it was sh short. Um, you can run through a playthrough really, really fast, but to really master it and to learn all the little secrets and stuff, it takes a lot. Yeah, that I, I will say it's one of the best like games that has replayability because you cannot play it in just one round. You have to play <laughs> it over and over again to discover all these different secrets because you're you're just walking around and exploring this environment and all these things that are, you know, seemingly quote unquote natural within that world are happening all at once. So you kind of have to explore around you in like 360 degrees and you just can't do that on one run. So um, I really appreciate that they did, you know, think about that and think that um, g give you enough control so that you can explore all the way around you and that there is a world happening all the way around you and, and all these different angles. So, um, yeah, it's, I just, I love the idea of Pokemon Snap. It's genius. Definitely genius. Um, it had humble beginnings. Um, Hal Laboratory was working on it. Um, and initially it, it was said to be a Jack and the Beanstalk game. Um, and it ultimately, like, it was supposed to be like a 64 DD thing, and it ultimately blossomed into what Pokemon Snap is today. Though it is speculated that some elements have been, were sent slated to go into, um, the Earthbound 64 game that was canceled. Um, oh, wow. It was supposed to have, like, planting elements, like planting, like, seeds and things like that. So, um, it's kind of cool that it, it had this early development seated in something so just like kind of fairy tale ish um and how it became something completely different <laughs> it's it's interesting right. how like they use like the the engine they were working on for that and it blossomed into two games one did see the light of day um they still planned on doing the 64 dd but they dropped it ultimately when they decided they weren't going to be doing that um the 64 dd is the disk drive for the 64 uh, you know, Sega did it, but uh, Nintendo decided not to do it. Uh, not yeah. until the GameCube, anyway. <laughs> right. Well, I think they did for Japan, but yeah, they didn't there bring was it over disc, to America. There was a disk drive for the even the NES, I believe. So, yeah, they, they had oh, been okay. doing that for a bit there. And, yes, I think they did have the 64DD um, working and purchasable in Japan. Yeah. Um, they always get the cool gadgets. That was, uh, I think, believe that's how Animal Crossing got its start. It was like Animal Forest, and then the GameCube version that we got was basically Animal Forest Plus, and it was just like a more glorified version of that. But, um, but I love like when develop uh, the development of games has 
the these types of stories where you know, they have these ideas in mind and they evolve and change and turn it into something completely different and at the top of my head, Banjo Kazooie is kind of similar. It was supposed to be something called Dreams, and it started like this boy with like a sword or something, and just slowly evolved into what we now know as uh, Banjo Kazooie. And I'm sure like almost every project, in a way, um, starts out that way. But um, it's just very cool that we ended up somehow with Pokemon Snap, which is a game that I, I think totally caught us all off guard at that time. Mm -hmm. It's such a different flavor of Pokemon, but it, it was kind of, it sparked these Pokemon. It, it really set the precedent for all of these Pokemon spinoffs that we have now. You know, there's Troze and Ranger and Mystery Dungeon. And like, they, they've tried so many different things from their, their tried and true formula. And I think a lot of that stems from this. Um, they did have Pokemon Pinball, of course, before that. Um, but it was just kind of all in that area, I would say. I'm not sure the timeline on that, which came first, but it was just really right. cool to see them to do this, something different with their IP and so different. And it come right. out so well. Um, and it, it really speaks volumes to how rich and how fully realized the Pokemon world is, because this mm -hmm. isn't something that you could just do with any franchise. You know, you can do this with like, I don't know, Wii Fit. Or, I don't know. I don't have the best examples at the top of my head, but like the Pokemon world is so, you know, they have all these things figured out, especially because they have the show and the games, you know, with an RPG, there's so many details that you have to figure out with an RPG. And that's why the games were as beloved and still are uh, so beloved, because it was just this this world that just totally engrossed you. And you just totally escaped from your your life and felt like you were in this world, like even though it was a Game Boy game it still was so immersive and the fact that it was able to translate into a 3d game like this involving photography which had nothing to do with the game boy games is just really a testament to just how brilliant uh the the concept art and and the concept of that world in general really is i like that um the barrier to entry is pretty low like you don't have to be really good at video games like it's not a like trigger happy or precision based game uh, yeah you, you got a time right to get a, a snap uh, a, a snapshot but it's not like super difficult like anybody could have picked it up um and that was really it was so easy to get into and also pretty affordable you can find it pretty cheap even to this day it wasn't something that stayed really expensive because it was a spinoff um so it was a lot more accessible to a lot of people and i think that's where a lot of the nostalgia was generated was because it was so easy to get a hold of and easy to play and it was just it fit to a lot of other people who weren't normally gamers that would just kind of get it. It would click for them. Yeah, um, and it, it was really cool. Um, and it, yeah, it, it just takes that simple concept of taking a picture with a camera. This is something that, you know, even at a very young age, you just understand how to do that. So um, yeah, you just look around and there's a little dot and you focus on something and you take a picture. And, you know, they do add some other modes, which I think were really, really clever, actually, um, like throwing an apple or the pester ball, um, a flute. I haven't gotten that far yet <laughs> um, because I, at least, uh, was only able to rent this game uh, when I was a kid. I now own it, thankfully. But, um, yeah, I, I just rented this game over and over and over again. Um, did you own this game, Ryan? I did. Um, in fact, I own it right now, believe it or not. Awesome. Um, it was one of the few games that I don't even know when I acquired it, really. I think I had it before I had the 64 even. Um, but yeah, that was like one of the few games that I had and I love it. I absolutely love it. It's still sitting in my system right now. Yeah, um, I, I don't play it as much as I should, but I, I still have that. And I, I also purchased it second it came out on the Wii. I picked that one up and I... Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I upgraded to get the Wii U version, but I did. Um, <laughs> it looks yeah, really they, good too, actually. Like they kind of cleaned does. it up a good amount on the Wii U. I was very surprised by that. Mm -hmm. uh, the game did release on March 21st in Japan um, in 1999. Uh, it looks like North America got it just a little bit later, uh, July 26th of the same year. 
And of course, you know, the, oh, wow. It looks like UK or PAL regions got it in September 15th of 2000. That's quite the jump. Oh. Like over a year later. Wow. That must have been torture. <laughs> the promotion was insane for this game, though. Yes, to I remember able that to, very well. To take your cartridge, you know, to any blockbuster um, throughout the summer of 99 and just put it in their kiosk and it'll print pictures for you. That was so cool. Yeah, it was amazing. Like, especially as a kid. Oh, my God. We lost our minds. <laughs> it was uh, like such a simple but novel idea. I do remember it being kind of expensive, though. I think it was like five dollars for like a little little mm -hmm. thing of stickers. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But hey, it's worth it. And it, it is so cool. If I had known about that at the time, I totally would have taken advantage of that. Um, I know I think it was Amiibo Jason. Um, they uh, they have one and they restored that cabinet. They got the full thing. It was kind of like their grail pretty much. Uh, they restored it and they're kind of upgrading it and they, they were made it so that they could actually use like the switch, play the switch on it so they could actually play their switch. You know, Pokemon snap game on that console is I think what they're going for. And that is just so cool. Um, just, ah, that, that is, that is so special to see the different posts that they post for that. And, uh, he's got a really, really cool treasure there. I'm sure that he enjoys that quite a bit. Um, you know, to actually own something like a piece of that history is just crazy. Um, and the fact that Nintendo did it in the first place was just really, really awesome. Yeah. And it also translated to, I don't know which one came out first, but they also had that feature in Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2 as well. So I, if I had a guess, I feel like Pokemon Snap would have came first. And then they're like, oh, this feature is really popular. This game's really popular to have some type of mode in Stadium 1 and 2. So, um, yeah, the, but it's, I don't know, just such a simple joy taking pictures of Pokemon. So a little bit about um, how well the game did. It's got an okay sales like for what it was um it was the sixth best selling video game in the united states so selling in excess of 1.5 million copies and really it was the the promotions that that pulled in like the the, the blockbuster you know the ease to, to, to be able to find it they had enough copies out there it did really well um it wasn't like a amazing like pokemon release but it was for a spinoff that's dang good it looks like when it first started, it was 151,000 copies uh, the first three days of its release, which is impressive. That's pretty good, especially for the <laughs> N64, which uh, like as a kid, I thought everyone had an N64, but apparently that's not the case. So no. I think that's a respectable number for this type of game. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do remember the commercials like I, I just I saw the commercial all the time and I was like, I need to have this game. I never did get it until like very recently, but like. For me, at least, that was like a almost a weekly visit to Blockbuster to play that game and like fighting <laughs> like other kids to get it. You know, it would be on that wall with all those new releases where they would just have like zillions of copies. And it's like, oh, they better have it. They better have it. And you see some empty cases and you start sweating. But then you find it. It's just like, OK, whew, I got it this week. Great. <laughs> but um, yeah, I am kind of glad that I rented it at the time because for what i guess it was 50 dollars for a new game um you know that's a pretty steep price for mm -hmm. the amount of levels that you get i don't know how many you get i'm guessing like six or seven or so i haven't beaten it fully but i'm gonna guess that's how many but um the the replayability um was really awesome and like even as a rental that was like such a perfect uh perfect rental game for me at least Definitely. Um, I played it with John Hester, um, or I watched John Hester play it. Um, <laughs> um, but it was really cool. Um, I remember just being in awe of the the final area, and like we were trying to figure out how do you do it, how do you take the picture, just like you know, well, don't give anything away. I haven't gotten to it yet. <laughs> it was really really cool that um, to have that experience, and it, it is a very watchable game. Like, you don't feel like you want to take over and play. Like, you're perfectly content just watching someone play it. And it's 
just like watching like a nature show. It, it's really yeah. cool in, in that in that way. And I've heard that like this new version, like the reviews are out, uh, the early reviews, and and people are really like loving it for it does more of what the original did and 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 better and and prettier too. Yeah. So I'm really sure. looking forward to just getting lost in that world. And I could hope that they'll have VR support someday. I doubt it. I seriously doubt it. But it would be really cool to experience that in a lab of VR setting. Yeah. Um, no, you're totally right about it being like a, a great game for like friends to like hang out and like watch each other and kind of like point things out to each other. Um, what's different about the, you know, the original and this new one that's coming out is that with the original, this was before the internet was a, a mainstream common thing. So when you got the original game for the N64, you couldn't look up things on the internet, or at least I could, and I didn't get a computer until, I don't know, four or five years later. Um, and so you had to figure all this stuff out. That's why I never really beat the game because I was just like kind of stuck on some areas. I just wasn't able to figure out what to do. Um, but now... I'm sure that this new game is going to kind of like embrace the internet and the gaming culture that you can find on the internet. So it'll be interesting to see how much it like lends itself to that. But at the same time, I'm not going to <laughs> be on the internet that much because I need to play this game completely without any spoilers and stuff like that. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, that was like a really awesome experience at that time and very few other games were kind of like that where it's just something completely brand new and you know when you're playing it with friends it's just this you know like i said this new experience and you just don't know what to expect and you have to experiment and try new things each time so um yeah i'm just uh, i'm so glad that it's coming back and that we have a new one never thought we'd see the day it's like it's crazy uh, awesome like everybody's like oh, i would be perfect for the 3ds they're gonna do it didn't happen oh uh, you know augmented reality been so cool and then oh it's gonna happen on the wii u it's perfect for the wii u it didn't happen yeah. and pokemon you know pokemon go came out and eventually released their own version of pokemon snapper you could take pictures of the pokemon like in ar and it still wasn't the game it was just like a mini thing side thing that you can do with your pokemon and and i use that quite frequently as as i've posted many times pictures of my toga kiss uh, throughout nostalgia chat in random times um but it still doesn't quite capture the awe that it would in an actual video game and uh it's really cool to know that we're going to get to experience that world again um with updated graphics in in a new way um that's yeah. just, oh it's so exciting just a couple days and and boom we're there I think right. this episode's going to come out after the fact, so uh, it'll be kind of cool to to kind of listen to this and be like, "Oh, wait, this is, you know, the speculation now." But people are actually going to be in it by the time that they listen to this. Oh yeah. man! And I'm so glad that it's getting pretty well reviewed. You know, I it's not going to be game of the year. I mean, maybe it could be, but I don't think it's going to be. But it's basically kind of what we were all just hoping for it to be and expecting it to be. So like a good combination between those two. So it's just another Pokemon Snap with some new features. And they clearly seem to understand what makes the original special. And they're just building upon that, correcting on some things that some people think could have been fixed in the original. So Pesterable. I'm just glad. What was that? I'm sure Peter would have had a heyday if they had put it in pester ball. <laughs> oh, true. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see like what changed and what's um what's different in this new one. But um it's it's such a interesting video game because it's like it's both exciting and relaxing and rewarding and it's just all these great adjectives and it's such a simple concept. Like you said, like you can move easily and control everything easily and it's like it, it, you're just in this world that they created and they created mm -hmm. this scene and this environment and you feel like you're a part of it because you can manipulate it you know it's not just you looking at things it's you looking and exploring and experimenting and interacting with that world and you can change the path too which like as a kid that to me was mind-blowing when mm -hmm. the electrode explodes and the rocks fall down and then there's this new path that opens up and you see todd's face like what and i'm like what what? <laughs> it's just it's such a great 
it's it's this very wondrous game you know it's like perfect mm-hmm. for when you're a kid and it, it would be great to go back as and as an adult just to get those nostalgic feelings again so uh, came at the perfect time right definitely and it was really cool that it was it was like a movie um yeah it's an on rails um first person experience but you could speed up and go through levels faster you could, you could move faster along the track or you could stop at certain points and take pictures or at least slow down um so you could kind of kind of have like a time element where you could take go at your own pace if you're running through a level you can run through a little faster um and th- these are upgrades that you had to get i believe through through playing um yeah but there was like a bunch of stuff that you could do with that that makes the experience pretty enjoyable yeah. and i don't think that's too much of a spoiler to throw out there just to say like hey you can actually you know kind of manipulate the pace for getting the pictures that you need um yeah. but th- even then like it's really hard to get that moment once once the moment's gone you're not going to get that pokemon picture right um and i think by far the hardest thing in the whole game is that that magikarp picture um, oh yes it's so rewarding when you can finally get it um, but there's some other stuff, but that one is like one that's most involved. Like you got to get it just right. And uh. right. And like when the zoo bat comes at you and the door opens, it's just like, oh, God, <laughs> I did not see that coming. There's a lot of examples like that. A lot of different um, Pokemon like uh, you, you see this like floating purple orb and it turns out to be I think it's like a haunter. You know, you don't know what that is. It's just like a ball. But then when you bring it back to Professor Oak, he's like, oh, you found a ghost or whatever. And um, oh, there's just so many little details that are just like coming back to me now. And it's just like cool to see this all these little mini stories unfold as you're exploring the area. You know, there's a, a, a coughing that's chasing a Jigglypuff and you can just let that happen if you want. Let it continue to happen or you can put it into it by like throwing something at the coughing and then that could end up rewarding you a little bit later. So um it's kind of like a choose your own adventure kind of book, but in video game form in a way. Charizard's probably my favorite. Yes. That was Getting great. that Charizard shot was so cool. Yeah. Um, it was so like majestic. He yeah. he comes out of the lava like this beautiful dragon. <laughs> and Moltres too, now that I think of it. I think you like mm-hmm. knock the egg off into the fire. So that was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lots of little surprises like that. <laughs> so charming like just dripping with charm um but not just like the gameplay but also this game has charming voice acting (laughs) oh no (laughs) (laughs) so charming is is a good word for it um definitely memorable um to this day uh professor oak's different phrases and and exclamations and stuff stick in my head and i'm constantly like they they always play like that like if i'm excited about something like wonderful pops in my head in that exact same voice you gotta hear it to to know but you gotta do it you can't just say easily voice do it in the voice you gotta do it (laughs) (laughs) wonderful (laughs) it's so good (laughs) welcome back Ooh, that was good. That was really good. I'm going to embarrass myself for the rest of my life by sharing this, but uh, when I was a kid, I could do pretty much every single Pokemon voice like perfectly, but then when my voice changed, I, you know, lost that ability, but I can still Aww. do Jigglypuff. That is the only one I can still do. Ah, <laughs> uh, if only I had some kind of recording device to record that from your childhood. <laughs> Yeah, I was. I sounded like a lunatic, probably like running around doing like Heracross and Scyther and all those other lunatic ones. I don't know. Do that today, and you'll be a star on TikTok. <laughs> oh, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, it's so cool that people get to experience this new experience and and get to see what Pokemon Snap's all about on the Switch because you know Switch is selling really well, so there's a good chance this game's going to be huge, and just. The, the barrier ent- entry is still going to be pretty easy. Uh, I'm expecting that a lot of people are going to get to play this and enjoy it. There's there's a lot of nostalgia um, from like all ages, all 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 genders and ranges and everything. Like I think everybody had a good chance and a good mix of people that would love this type of game. Um, right. Definitely. Like I'm I'm going to say go out on a limb here and say it's a must own for Switch owners. Like. Right alongside, you know, playing your your Mario Odyssey and your Breath of the Wild and, and your Mario Kart. I'd say this one's a, a 
a staple for first player experience. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like, I, I think Josh said this too, like you can't really describe what this game is. Like you just have to have someone play it and experience it themselves. It's just mm -hmm. so unlike anything else. Um, yeah, it's, it's crazy that's coming to the Switch. I do really wish that it came to 3DS and Wii U. I feel like those systems mm -hmm. kind of lent themselves better to this type of game. But um, yeah, I, don't know, I just, uh, I can't believe the day is finally here. <laughs> but it's, um, it's such a mystery why more people didn't copy this formula and try to put it in and make a game off of it. True, um, good point. Because it was just a really cool engine, a really cool mechanic um, that you don't really see like spiritual successors or anything like that. You could argue a case that maybe, you know, Beyond Good and Evil had like camera mechanics to it. So maybe, That's but fair. it's not quite the same. Um, it's just, I guess there's a couple of ones out there. Uh, one's a bit uh, risque, uh, but you know, th there's some like picture games out there, but not, it's never quite the same experience. And I'm yeah. so glad that Nintendo's bringing this back. And oddly enough, like working with Bandai Namco to bring it, which is kind of right. crazy. <laughs> yeah, I did not. Ex I, I was kind of worried when I found out that they were developing it because they have a weird track record. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, they've helped with Super Smash Brothers, so I was like, okay, relax, Chris. They, they've done Smash Brothers Ultimate, and that's, like, amazing. But, you know, they've done Star Fox Assault and <laughs> Donkey Konga, stuff like that. And they're not bad games, but they're not amazing. But um, I am glad that whoever is behind it, they seem to get it, and they seem to have done a great job. So thank you, Namco, for really putting the work in for this one, at least. So we had a, a healthy amount of Pokemon in the original. Um, and, you know, original 151. Um, I don't believe they did anything outside of that, which was fine. Um, and that kind of sparked, like, dreams for... I would love to see Pokemon Snap in Gen 2. Like, I'd love to see the new Pokemon and Pokemon Snap be an even bigger experience, the more Pokemon to take pictures of. And then, you know, Gen 3 came, and Gen 4 came, Gen 5 came. Right. And like you got further and further away from the possibility of that as like more and more Pokemon were added. And it's crazy to think that they've actually given us an experience that has hundreds of Pokemon in it that you can take pictures of. And that's just yeah. so cool. Um they're finally giving this to us and it's it's been so requested over the years. Like yeah. I think it it rivals, I would say, as far as expect expectations of it coming and, and coming like out would, it would probably rival the mother series, like mother three and, and that aspect, it'd be one of those on the tier, like maybe even if it's third place on the list, like that was something that people expected to happen. Just like super Mario RPG was going to happen. They're going to have a sequel or re remake or something, you know, everybody, like everyone would put that up there with, with Pokemon snap. And uh, it's, it's definitely is recognized as a beloved series and something that, should be made and nintendo's capitalizing on that and i hope they do more stuff like this the things that right. we didn't get to play or would love to play again in a new way uh, f-zero um you know there's uh ice climbers which uh, uh you know <laughs> i bring it up every time so anyway right no you know, no that's a really good point you're right it has been requested over the years and it is odd that we're now finally getting it and i just wonder if it's because there's been such a demand for it you know like what really did it for them what made them choose to do this now um because yeah like you said we it would have been great to do it with gen 2 and gen 3 but at the same time now we have it and now is our opportunity to let them know that this is what we want and we want more of this so mm -hmm. hopefully and i i believe this will happen hopefully this will translate into good sales and this could become a series moving forward um as long as you know the quality is still there i, I would uh, hope but um yeah. yeah now is our chance to really let our voices be heard and really put our money where our mouths are um Going back a little bit to the the blockbuster thing with the taking pictures um, or getting your pictures printed, um, the Wii did have the ability to the pictures that you took in game you could post on the Wii's message board um, and kind of share those that way. Um, but then um, I don't really think they did anything like that for the Wii U version. Um, but for this version, uh, this one coming out for Switch uh, with the new game, 
they have the ability now um, that it connects via smartphone app uh, to the Instax printer. And I, I believe it's Fujifilm, I want to say. I think um, so. But yeah, you can take, you know, you can take your pictures in the game and then send them via, I believe, QR code to the, the phone app and just print directly to the printer um, and to give you that experience from back in the day. And that is just really charming. Um, yeah. They have like a, a Pikachu themed cover or case or, or something like that uh, for the printer. Yeah. And it's That's just so cool. Such a great, uh, awesome, nice little touch. You know, I love... I love that they were mindful of that because a lot of developers would uh, kind of skip that because it, it would be kind of a headache for them to arrange. But they they did it in such a clever way, in such a modern way, and um, you know, totally optional. But it does like back in the day add this new dimension where this game jumps out from you know your screen and enters your real physical world so those pictures that you took in the video game you can now print them and you can you know i don't know i guess you can print them, print them as stickers but you can put them on like a journal or on your wall or whatever you know depending on how old you are and how interested you are but um it's just such a i love little things like that where the game comes out and enters your real physical realm you know not to sound so uh corny in that way but it's just it's it's cool it's just a, a nice little touch you know it's it's just kind of like having a, a physical version of a game where that it comes with like a booklet and like little goodies and stuff it's just that mm -hmm. that extra little touch so i'm really happy that they did that or that they're uh, doing it right now yeah how interesting i think it would be a great idea to take this game um, and package it in a different way um, in the future uh, to give it kind of a, what's the word? Like Call of Duty style. Um, even with DLC, like a, a, a yearly DLC or something where you could explore new regions take pictures of new Pokemon in certain areas and things like that. Like with DLC nowadays, like with Pokemon snap, there's a potential to really grow that, that world and, and add on more to the game and give fans more of this. Um, it would be really cool to do, to see them do that because you don't need to make like crazy new game mechanics for Pokemon snap, uh, just more content, more to explore, more to see, like just to get immersed in that world. Right. Um, it's Absolutely. a great opportunity. Yeah. And I and I actually like sometimes forget that DLC is a thing these days. That is mm -hmm. something that developers can do, and something I would happily pay for if it was done correctly. Mm -hmm. um, something that's great about the original sixty four version is that there's a lot of variety. There's not many levels per se. You know, like I mentioned, maybe like six or seven or so. Um, I'm guessing, but there's a lot of variety to those levels. You have beach, you have a valley, you have uh i don't know forest stuff like that so for them to add to um to the game that is about to come out would be awesome and you know if the sales are good enough i could see them totally doing that namco's no stranger to doing dlc so um yeah that would be great definitely hmm i seem to i seem to remember seen a fair bit of Pokemon that I absolutely loved from the original 151. Um, you know, Articuno was awesome, like, to be able to have the legendary birds in the game, just in general. Yeah, but, um, totally. You know, it was really cool to see um, some of, like, those staples, like seeing a Ponyta running by, seeing a Slowpoke, uh, seeing a Meowth, and then the silly antics that that Meowth had, and, and uh, the Pidgey or Pidgeotto that that got in a fight with it or whatever. And like all the Pokemon interacting is really, really cool. Um, yeah. And it's 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 part of the charm of it. Like, you know, I say Easter eggs, but it makes it feel like it's a living world. And to see all these Pokemon interact with each other is really cool. Um, right. And you get a feel for the I, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but you do get a feel for the personalities of all these different Pokemon like uh, Meowth from the show has so much personality. I'm glad that they brought that into this game because they could have just gone with like a generic Meowth. But it seems like 
Well, I mean, I guess it is kind of like a regular Meowth, but it does still have kind of that personality from the show. Uh-huh. Um, but, you know, there, for the N, for an N64, the animations are pretty great. You know, they're not amazing, but, like, they there's so much personality with the animations that they're given. You know, a Kangaskhan is very different from a Snorlax, and a Pidgey <laughs> is very different from, like, a Zubat or a Haunter or something. So um, the amount of Pokemon that are that are there in the N64 version, I don't know exactly how many there are, but, like, it's pretty impressive what they were able to do with all those different Pokemon and make them really stand out and, um, yeah, make you enjoy all these different scenes and moments because they're all so different and we all have our favorites. So um, uh, I just I could go on and on about this. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to know, back on the, po- uh, on the Pokemon, like, that were in the game kind of topic... What do you want to see in the new game? What Pokemon would you love to see in this new updated graphical style? Mm. Well, a thought that I was having just a a few moments ago is that with Pokemon, now we have so many. Like, there might even be about a thousand at this point. I'm not entirely sure. 900 and something. Oh, yikes. Wow. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so for me personally, I kind of stopped around the Diamond Pearl era. Um, just cause, you know, I was getting older and the games get kind of samey, the RPGs at least, but I think what's there is great. But, you know, years and years later, we have all these Pokemon and it's different now because when I was playing the games as a kid with just that 151, each Pokemon there had its own something special about them. You know, like Mew was like the mysterious special extra uh, bonus Pokemon, you know, that rare thing where like anytime you saw it, it's like, oh my God, it's Mew. But now years later, it's like the, the, that meaning kind of has been lost in a way. Um, Mm -hmm. so it'll be interesting to see how that translates to this new game. Like what are the new Pokemon that are really special where they kind of tease you in the background that, Hey, Mm -hmm. this, uh, this character is here. How do you think you can see him? So, um, It'll be pretty cool for me because it's like I'll be playing as a former fan. So I have a, I don't know, I I probably know about half of them, maybe a little bit more than that. And I'll be um, seeing Pokemon that I've never seen before, too. So that's also really exciting. But um, as far as Pokemon that I want to see in this game, I really, really love the gold and silver Pokemon. So uh, like Meryl and uh, Hoot Hoot, Ladybug. Um, Heracross, I like Scizor, um, Totodiles, like my favorite, and Cyndaquil. I just, I love that generation. I just love all mm-hmm. those designs, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I just, it, it'll also be, like I said, very cool to see all these new Pokemon and for me to be surprised and be like, oh, what is this? And how does this interact with the world? And what makes this Pokemon special? You know, so I, it's cool to be excited for two very different reasons. So uh, what about you, Ryan? I hope to see the uh, the Smash Brothers Pokemon in there, um, like the playable Pokemon. Uh, it'd be kind of cool to see them. Um, n- not necessarily Incineroar, but, you know, the others, uh, Lucario <laughs> and things like that. You know, it'd be pretty cool to see them. Yeah. Um, you've got to see Pikachu in there. If they don't have Pikachu in the game, like... What are they doing? <laughs> oh, you know they do. You know they everything <laughs> Pokemon related has something with Pikachu. <laughs> um, but I I do want to see like returning Pokemon. I want to see Jigglypuff come back. Like I always enjoy like the crazy floatiness of, of Jigglypuff. <laughs> yeah. And uh, just you know, Ghost Pokemon. That's a big thing. Like I would absolutely love to see a Litwick running around, Chandelure. <laughs> like even if like. DLC comes out like in October for this game. It's like a haunted house you can explore and take pictures. Like, sign oh me God. up. Like, I want amazing. to do this so badly. <laughs> oh, great idea. <laughs> oh, but there's there's so many like so much potential. And like we're already talking about like sequels and DLC and stuff like that. But you know we haven't even played the, this game. Yeah. Um, but just you know running wild with hopes for this series and just stemming from a love from how simple simple the game was but yet complex and full of wonder and surprise it was quite wonderful uh, (laughs) i mean it it really is like a wondrous series and 
I, you know, I said this a few times, the, the Pokemon universe is just so fully realized and not a lot, of, a lot of other games can get away with this. And so um, it's just, I don't know, I, I'm excited to go back to when I was a kid and just kind of get that feeling of wonder and it, it, like the world is for you to explore and there's all these secret mysteries and Easter eggs and there's just so much to discover and stuff. And I just feel like even as an adult, it's very corny and like kind of embarrassing to admit that, but like, I feel like something like that is very refreshing and Mm -hmm. just like, it's always a welcome addition, especially after like the year that we just had, we kind of need something like this. At least I do personally, I just need something to kind of wake me up and, make me rediscover my love for video games and and like wonder in general but yeah i think that's an excellent point this game has a lot of potential for that um it's for those who are diehard pokemon fans who like to collect all the pokemon and have been doing it for years and years and years um this is a welcome like break up to the action and you're not trying to get every single pokemon in your pokedex like you're just taking pictures of pokemon and interacting with them in their world and that right. is something really special because bonding with Pokemon, like they've tried so many times with Pokemon and me and different things like, and you know, even in Pokemon Go, you can like play with your, your buddy Pokemon and everything. Like they, they go to great lengths to make that kind of more of your personal like friend or pet or what have you. Um, but this is on another level where you're actually in their environment, like seeing how they interact and, and the antics they get into and there's just some something just so intimate about that to get into the Pokemon world and in this perspective, it's yeah, it's it's a shame that they haven't done this sooner uh, since yeah. the original because they were on something like gold with that that they struck gold with that and they just never really brought it back again. And yeah. I hope that this is the right time finally. Like the, all those times that they skipped and didn't do it, I hope that finding you know Bandai Namco to help out, you know, they were the ones that made. Like they needed graphics behind this game. Everybody said they wanted the updated graphics for Pokemon Snap. And so, like, this game, if you've played Pokemon Tournament, you know how beautiful ga- that game is. And so, like, taking that engine and putting it into this, into this, like, picture taking uh, on rails romp through the Pokemon world, like, sign me up. Like, yeah. I, I don't care if this game is super short, like the first one was, maybe even shorter. As long as it has that replay value and it's just it gives you that immersion like the original did, like I'm satisfied. Yeah, absolutely. And th- you brought up a really good point before where like in the game, they kind of become your buddies. But in Pokemon Snap, you're kind of in their world, like you're in their natural habitat and you're just seeing how they candidly exist without these battles and uh, these items that you use with other trainers and stuff. It's just you in nature, quote unquote nature, and just seeing how these creatures live their lives. And it's just, it's like you said, it is, it's intimate and in in its own very unique and special way. Um, Yeah. I never really thought about it that way. You're right. Um, I also wanted to bring up something uh, totally different if that's okay. I love the music in this game and the sounds. The sounds and the music are just so satisfying and it's just great atmospheric music to what you're doing and really gets you into that like wondrous mood and just the sounds are so satisfying too. So I just wanted to bring that up. I always think of the uh, the different flute sounds uh, that you could play. Uh, that was really cool. Uh, I have the... not gotten that far, but I, I hope too soon. <laughs> I just a little jingle that it plays, a little sound that it makes. Um, it's cool. Um, yeah. I, I really enjoy that. Um, and I hope they have more musical elements in this one, like different ways to interact with the Pokemon um, that makes sense. Uh, just kind of set up your sh- shot to get that perfect interaction. Um, I'm really looking right. forward to seeing how they do that. Um, yeah. It's because something that's special about the original is, you know, like we said, it's not the longest game and there's not too many levels, but it's cool because the more that you experiment, the more that you explore and end up getting rewarded for that, the more you get rewards 
like actual rewards for that. Like you're rewarded for your, uh, you know, your dedication and your hard work with new items and new ways to explore. So at first you just take pictures and then you get a new item and there's new ways to interact. And then once you've exhausted that, you can find new ways to interact with this other item. So it'll be really cool to see how that translates into this new one and to see like how clever or not so clever. We'll see. I don't know. It (laughs) seems like it's, that they've done a good job, like we said. Um, but yeah, it'll be cool to see how um, interesting the items that they give you and reward you with are. I'm a, I'm a bit torn. I don't know how I'm going to play it. If I'm going to play it docked so I can get the full beauty of the graphics, or if I'm going to play it handheld and use the gyro to like look around or like like swivel on a chair um, and get that experience, or, or I don't really know if maybe I'll play through the game one way and then play through it the other way yeah. uh, just to get that feeling like I, I haven't quite decided how I want to tackle this game but I've got options with the Wii U or not the Wii U, the Switch being like so like versatile um, it'll be cool to really experience that um, and I'm, I'm, I'm just wanting to see this world in all the ways that I can and uh, just enjoy every minute of it yeah I mean, it's it's like what we said, you know, the, the game is meant to be played over and over again and try to find new ways of discovering things. And part of the I mean, I think one of the best ways of doing that is by literally changing your perspective. So perhaps something that you were able to see in handheld mode is not something that you would have picked up on if in docked mode. And um, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Like you said, the Switch, there's all these different ways of playing the exact same game. And, you know, now we have new options for motion controls, too. So I say play it in all the ways. Don't just play it in some ways. Play it in every mm-hmm. single way. And that could even help you discover new and interesting things that you wouldn't have thought of uh, otherwise if you just mostly played a doctor otherwise, you know. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I am glad that there's gyro controls, so I'm... Wanted mm-hmm. to throw that out there. I, I was really hoping that they would, because that adds a whole new level of immersion. Mm-hmm. I don't expect it to be super robust, but hey, maybe it will be. Uh, Hope so. And I know I'll enjoy this game. Like, there's no way that it would miss the mark. Like, if they just present it in any way. Like, seriously, if they had just taken the original game and made it prettier, <laughs> I'd been happy. You know, because right. I I'd always want to like play more of this style. And it's yeah. definitely a, you know, it's a refreshing uh take from all the collecting and just going back and just relax and take pictures of Pokemon. Yeah, um, totally. I'm and there's no to- like there's no perfect way to go through a route. You just do what you want in that route. You can mm-hmm. just do you can manipulate like one Pokemon or scene. Uh, for that entire route or you can try to do as many as you can and it's totally up to you Um, I do hope that they have like different objectives and like goals for you to set out to do um, Mm -hmm. because you know the original didn't have too too many which was okay I still liked it Um, but yeah I just I hope they mix it up and make it even more rewarding and stuff and one of my favorite things about the original is how and I, I also mentioned this how you can change the path so that'll be really really fun and exciting to discover uh, mm-hmm. ways to do that like with the Porygon I'll never forget with the Porygon where you, like you see these I, th- I think it's like a brown cube and against the wall and it's just like what is that thing moving and then you throw a ball and then a Porygon jumps out and then <laughs> I guess he slams on a button and that opens the gate and then again Todd is just like whoa what just happened so <laughs> yeah I want to see a lot of that <laughs> mm-hmm. definitely uh, and I'm, I'm so glad that in the new game we're going to be taken underwater because that was something that was really like really lacking in most games is you didn't get to go underwater explore pokemon under the sea and so we get to finally see that world um in in a 3d environment and explore underwater and that was that was really cool that they did decide to include that in the game i didn't even know that i i actually have been purposely not watching footage of it just to keep as <laughs> much of it as a surprise as possible but um it's probably going to be the only time that we want to be underwater in a video game because <laughs> we're not going to be needing to control ourselves since it would be on rails or at least i imagine it will be um yeah i think i saw it like one of the early trailers it showed like this underwater thing i'm like i want to be there i, I want to do this like I-, I i love it and yeah nintendo 
or Pokemon or whatever did the new Pokemon Snap, you know, the new name uh, as, as Nintendo d- tends to do. But even then, I can't fault it for that. And uh, who is looking forward to this game? This guy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can't believe it's already here. I actually, this is a game that I wasn't really planning on getting. Uh, it's one of those kinds of games. Like with first party games, I tend to wait a little bit, try to get some kind of discount. But I actually have a good amount of GameStop coupons where I could probably get like 20 bucks off. So I think I'm going to do that because it's probably not going to go down in price for a while. And I no. don't want too too many things like spoiled for me. So feel like now is like the perfect time especially now that everyone's playing it you know Mm -hmm. um i don't really care about like fomo and you know trying to do what everyone else is doing but i think this is a game i'll make an exception for in that way Mm -hmm. and this is one like you want to kind of stay away from social media and just play and discover on your own totally yep you don't want to be really yeah yeah, it's going to be really hard to escape from spoilers i'm kind of worried about that yeah it's gonna be interesting to see what they do with that even like po- posting a picture of a pokemon like that's kind of spoilery too you know but i look forward to all of it and yeah the day I, has... I trust they're gonna pull off a really good good game here yeah uh, i'm really thankful for the reviews and i can't believe that it's already here like luckily time has flown by and i haven't really yeah been you know on the edge of my seat thinking about this game too much because i've been so busy so it's nice to have my finals be done soon (laughs) and i'll have something like this to play and relax with in just a little bit so um yeah i think i'm gonna pre-order it excellent all right well i think that brings us to the end of the episode chris do you want to do our due diligence sure um, so we love hearing from our fans. So if you want to, wanted to leave us a voicemail, you can call us at 317-969-5690. Or if you want, you can also send us an email. That's totally fine. So our email address is Nintendo Nostalgia IN at gmail.com. And you can also find us on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. So on Instagram, our handle is at Nintendo N O S I N. And on Twitter, you can find us at uh, at Nintendo underscore NOS. And our Facebook chat group is called Nintendo Nostalgia Chat, I believe. (laughs) Not even entirely sure. Um, But yeah, we love hearing from our fans, so feel free to reach out to us whenever. You can post stuff on our wall. And also, if you enjoyed this episode, we'd really appreciate it if you left us a review. All right. That brings us to the end of the episode. Thank you so much for listening this week. We hope you all enjoy the new Pokemon Snap. And we will catch you next week for an action pack episode. Later, Preston. Bye, everyone. Pocket Monster uh, Polaroid? No, that's not right. Uh...